Revolutionary War. Yes, sir. For those of our listeners who don't know about that, uh, the issue of religious liberty is what led the pilgrims to come to our shores to escape persecution. And uh, repression of worship led the pastors a couple hundred years later to strip off their black robes and join the war against the British. It was when religious liberty was threatened that they were willing to go to war. And I, I just uh, hope there are pastors out there today who will fight for constitutional liberty, for the First Amendment, and for religious liberty. We're at a real turning point, aren't we? Yes, sir. I believe this is probably the most important time I've ever seen in my life for the future of our nation. And we do need men like the Black Robe Regiment to stand up. Uh, if you think about the heroes of the Revolutionary War, we think about We think about Adams. We think about Washington. We think about Jefferson. And they were true heroes. But if you do, were to read the writings of those men, they point to pastors, right? Both white and African American that stood up and thundered against the injustices of King George for 20 years. Whenever Paul Revere rode uh, back saying the British is coming, he was riding to his pastor's house. Uh, and then there were guys like the Muhlenberg brothers. The Muhlenberg brothers, one of them, began, got up and said, began to preach out of Ecclesiastes. There's a time for peace and a time for war. And he led his men out to war. His other brother vehemently opposed him said, don't do it, you're crazy, this is terrible. Well, the other brother, the British, uh, come into his town, they take away his church, they drive him from the city, and they take his ability to, to lead his flock away. The British did that to him because he spoke against the Church of England. Now, they say that, that First Amendment, the Muhlenberg brothers, that preacher, he, he then became one of the biggest proponents of the Revolutionary War, and the First Amendment where it says government cannot establish a state religion nor oppose the free worship of, of others, that those guys were behind that. See, that they felt the effect of government coming against the church. And that's why these men were willing to go to war for their congregations and for their country. They were pastors. They were patriots. And I'm believing God for a new black robe regiment to stand up around America because we've been pushed into a corner. We've been told to be quiet. We've been told we can't be political. Uh, I believe it's not being political. I believe it's being prophetic. And there's a time to speak. And we need more preachers that stop wanting to be um, boy band type stars and start wanting to be men of God who speak against injustice and speak for righteousness. It, it's obvious that it's not just the virus they're concerned about. They're trying to limit the church. This is an attack on the institution of the church. It's really not about controlling the virus. It's about controlling the people. And uh, I hate to say it, but the liberal governors hate the voice of the church because we stand for life. We stand for traditional values, right? We stand for the things that make America, America. And they would love to have a button to turn our voice off. And I'll tell you what, my voice doesn't get turned off. And I'm thankful for the pastors and the preachers whose voices, they won't allow them to turn them off. So, so this is happening all over America. Now, we saw a great victory in Illinois. Illinois is now free uh, from this type of tyranny. We worked with uh, some dear people. They were... Um, Elam Romanian Pentecostal Church. I was with them a week or two ago. I think it was a week ago. It's all it's all flying so fast. It's it's uh, running together in my mind. Mm -hmm. But Pastor Christian Ionesco is the pastor. The mayor of Chicago, listen to this, threatened him with something called total abatement. I've never heard of it. I had to have an attorney explain it to me. He'd never heard of it. And what total abatement means is we can condemn you as a public hazard. We can come in and tear down your building without due process. Those are the kind of threats that are being issued against churches. That uh, is unbelievable. He was running the services only at 15% capacity. And she overplayed her hand. Uh, we got loud with the media about what she'd done. 
And I believe the governor of Illinois saw what was going to happen to him politically if he didn't do something. He was going to have to go before Kavanaugh would be looking at the case the next day. The governor of Illinois backed off and said the churches can do what they want in the state of Illinois. That was going to be one of the toughest states in the union to win. And I'll tell you what, Jesus fixed it in a, in a day. And uh, I'm believing Jesus is going to fix it in California and the other states that are still mistreating the church. Tell me about your church. How are you doing? Uh, what did you do on Pentecost Sunday? Yes, sir. We've been running. Uh, we went back on the 17th. So we've been running uh, three weeks now. And uh, Pentecost Sunday was great. What we're seeing, and I think what most people are seeing that are, that are bringing church back together, is we're seeing about a third of our congregations coming back in, in person. Uh, I think they were a little more scared this weekend because there were so many uh, protests. Tell me about that. Do you mean outside your church they were actually protesting you? No, no, no not me, just in our city. Uh, oh, I both see. Amarillo oh. and Owensboro. So, so you know, you, you have all these images yeah. on the news, and people are leery to get out. So I think that's probably hurting church attendance right now just because of the fear factor. Our church about is a, it, it's showing up about a third in person. And then we've asked those that are 65 or older with pre-existing conditions uh, to stay at home. We don't tell them to because if I try to tell my mother what to do, it's never going to hurt Dr. Dobson, right? <laughs> you ask. And uh, so, so some of them are still online or in the parking lot. But I think a lot of churches are seeing about a third of their crowd show up. And, and I see this as a six-month re-entry period. Um, and that's okay. We want it to be safe. But, but the main point is, is uh, it's not about just getting everybody back at once. The main point is the government doesn't get to tell us what to do. Yeah. The government yes. doesn't make the decision for us. We are the church. We are the people. We elect them. They don't lord over us. They are not the ruling caste. We are not the peasants. This is not England. This is why we had a 1776. And I'll tell you, they keep it up, and we're going to need another one. Well, Brian, I'm sure you're aware that President Trump has spoken out in defense of religious liberty, and especially the church. I have a quote that was released from the White House just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and let me read it. Uh, governors need to do the right thing and allow these very important essential places of faith to open right now for this weekend. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but not churches, he said. It's not right, so I'm correcting this injustice and in calling houses of worship essential. These are places that hold our society together and keep our people united, he added. So I appreciated the stance that he took. It really was in support of the thing you, Brian, and other pastors are trying to defend. Hey, let me take you back uh, to earlier in our conversation where you said that you were a guest on Fox News. You've actually been on Fox News three times, haven't you? You know, I think I think it was more than that. I think it was four or five times. It all runs. It's all run together now. So I did. Uh, yeah, I did. I was on. They covered me. Then I was on Fox and Friends first. Then I was on Fox and Friends, and then I was on Harris Faulkner. So it's been four times with Fox, and uh, they've been great to work with. And uh, just asking us, you know, the questions. Um, what are you doing to keep people safe? And and we have our protocols, and then uh, why have you done this? And it's obvious to stand up for religious liberties and, and the First Amendment. And I'm still calling that they, they allowed me and helped me so much to call for every pastor, every rabbi, every religious leader. They need to go to peacefulgather.com. They need to sign up to take their church, take their house of worship back together safely and sanely. It's time to do it. Because if we don't do it now, we don't stand up now, and if we're not a united uh, voice now, what, what, what is going to happen in the future? So, uh, yeah, the media coverage has been incredible. I did Governor Huckabee's show, uh, was on this last week, and uh, what, a, what a prince of a man. I had an incredible time with Governor Huckabee. 
but uh, it's been a real honor and a real privilege to meet some of the people I've met. And it's also been heartwarming to see that people cared that you would stand up and uh, that you did care about religious freedom in America. We, we, have, we have more friends with us than we realize. There are more with us, I believe, than there are against us. So, so it's been it's been an honor to be on some of those shows. And uh, I'll tell you what, I was terrified. This is a funny story. I was traveling by RV to go to Kentucky, and I had my laptop set up. I was getting ready to do Fox and Friends before we kicked open our churches. So I, I do my sound check, and then the guy driving my RV tries to pull over to get me into a good spot. And when he did, my, my laptop falls off and breaks in two. So oh. I'm supposed to be live in like five minutes. I have just broke my laptop. So I get an iPad <laughs> set up. I get it working, and I get myself back to it. And my kids are with me. I have three small children, and uh, well, I have a 14-year-old, a 10- and an 8-year-old. And while I'm doing Fox and Friends, my 10-year-old boy jumps out from behind the side and starts dancing to throw me off behind the, behind the laptop while I'm doing Fox and Friends. So, Dr. Dobson, would you tell me how to handle that? As I'm not <laughs> I think you're doing it very well. I, I, it's just incredible. So you got a fair shake from Fox News. Oh, Fox News was fair. Uh, I felt balanced, like they were fair. I felt like they were balanced. And uh, it was it was an honor working with them. It really was. Yes, sir. Brian, did you ever think this would happen to you? You're just out there in a fairly small town, 50,000 people, and uh, trying to do the work of a pastor and building a church. All of a sudden, you're on national television, and people are aware of who you are. I hope more know. I don't want to create problems for you, but how can people write to encourage you uh, if they have something they want to? I'd like them to tell you they're praying for you. Well, I, I would. I'll tell you what. We have on on uh, peaceably gathered dot com. There's a place for pastors to sign up. There's also a place for people to sign up a uh, petition that they support us. And they're, they're, they're going back to church, right? In some shape, form, or fashion, but they're with us. They can also send us information at info at hischurch.cc. Info at hischurch.cc. Um, they would be great, great, and, and just peacefullygather.com. you got to be careful and... Um, Sometimes that gets moved so far down the line. Uh, people don't understand this, but a lot of the big tech agencies, when they find out what you're about, they don't like you. And they try to cover up and hide and make it hard for people to find your sites. So it's peaceably, P-E-A-C-E-A-B-L-Y, gather, G-A-T-H-E-R, dot com. So they can hit us there or at info at hischurch.cc. Let's make sure everybody understands. You're not trying to be medically unwise. You're not going to pack your church with people shoulder to shoulder and have people who are a little older sitting there next to somebody that's younger, uh, everybody being nervous about the, the virus. What about masks? Are you requiring people to wear masks? Uh, I'll tell you what, all of my ushers and all of my workers are wearing masks. I'm not requiring everyone in our congregations to wear them. Uh, we have encouraged those 65 and older pre precondition. Watch online or stay in the parking lot. We'll serve a communion there. Uh, there's a large space between people. We have our seating arranged in such a way where you sit with your family and then you're social distance from everybody else. So we've said we need to be caring, we need to be compassionate, but we need to be constitutional, right? Uh, and exercise our rights. Uh, plus, I'll say with the mask, the mask, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a medical expert, so, but there's conflicting information about the masks. Uh, Dr. Fauci comes out one time and says, the masks will do you no good. Next time, Dr. Fauci comes out and says, wear the masks. I don't know. I don't know. Our, our ushers are wearing them, but I'm not going to make people wear it. Well, how can people pray for you, Brian? I'll tell you, I think they need to pray. Um, God, give me strength and wisdom. I want them to pray for the freedom of the church in America. 
I want them to pray that sanity would prevail. And uh, I want them to pray that, that this violence would stop. More than anything else, we need, we need this violence to stop. And I'm also asking ministers around the nation, organize prayer rallies, go to your courthouse steps, and I think we need to pray together for peace. Uh, and, and it needs to not just be the white church or the black church or the Hispanic church. It needs to be us all together, praying together. So come on, we need to gather together and pray for this this um, this danger to leave our nation. Well, we need to let our listeners know that the noise that they hear in the background is uh, for from the fact that you're in LAX in Los Angeles uh, at the airport and you are about to take a plane uh, where are you headed yes sir I'm, I'm i'm heading to uh louisville kentucky the way the airport's so messed up or the, the airlines are so messed up uh, i'll go to dallas texas tonight where i can get to louisville by tomorrow for uh for one of these rallies where i'll be praying with the mayor of kentucky and i'll be praying with a lot of different faith leaders so i apologize for the background noise uh, that's no problem for us, but are you not afraid to fly? A lot of people are afraid to fly today. Well, a lot of people are afraid to fly. I prefer not to, but I think that this hour is calling me to do it. And uh, I wanted to stand with my brothers in California who've been so uh, persecuted, so pushed against, so mistreated. Uh, when, whenever they were opening up on Pentecost Sunday, I've been uh, working with them talking with them that, that i flew out to be with them and so uh so i'll tell you what i believe this dr dobson i believe living to not die is not living at all so i i don't live in fear i try to live in faith i don't want to do stupid stuff but i'm not going to focus on the 0.24 percent of what could go wrong I'm going to focus on the 99% that can go right kind of guy. My goodness. I'm so glad to get acquainted with you. We're going to have to meet face-to-face -face at some time. I just appreciate you. You're a courageous man, a defender of Jesus Christ and his church and of religious liberty and all of its context. And I wish we had um, about 15 million of them just like you out there who are defending what we believe. And thank you for talking with us today. I pray that the Lord will will go with you as you uh, take this next uh, challenge and uh, lead you in what to do next. They're going to lay traps for you. You said it the first uh, day that we talked. You said that they tried to to lead you into some kind of trap that would embarrass you. Uh, is that still going on? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. People try things like that. And uh, one of the uh, and it's so obvious you never do this, but but they'll hit you and harass you on social media, try to pull you into uh, something like that. Uh, so you never respond to that. You don't you don't you don't respond to that because, you know, somebody wants a screenshot of you saying something uh, angry or or something, you know, that could be deemed inappropriate. And that goes out. The second thing is they'll start trying to take pictures of you, uh, maybe not socially distanced from somebody else, or you're standing too close. And, you know, they're just looking for anything. It's a social war, isn't it? It's a social war, and it's a camera-happy uh, group of people that are always looking to do something to somebody else. And so we just really have to be vigilant, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And I'm not going to live in fear, and I'm not going to let that control me, but I am just watchful. So uh, pray for us that, you know, Jesus went through this, right? I mean, this was uh -huh. this was Jesus' life. They hated him, too. Yeah, they tried to trap him all the time. And uh, some of the best parts of the gospel, I mean, the gospel's all good. Amen. It's good news. But I love to watch him turn their traps on them. Uh, so pray that I have wisdom, the wisdom of Jesus that turns the, the person that lays the snare. The tra and that's exactly what we need, wisdom, and uh, act like Jesus and be like Jesus. Even with our imperfections, we can look up to Jesus, and we can uh, 
travel this world and and give love unconditional love the love of Jesus travels with the Stevensons here John Stevenson and uh, June Guyman Stevenson 859-750-0000 859-750-0000 or join us on Facebook under John Stevenson with a PH S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N or watch us on YouTube under Travels with the John Stevenson. And uh, this will be on there and it will be on Facebook and uh, help spread the word for for the, uh, the word of the Bible for all who will listen. God bless you and have a great day.